this morning as we look in the scripture. I want us to uh, read an account of one of the healings of Christ, uh, but I want to really zone in on one phrase in particular that was uh, spoken by uh, the people who saw the healing, the people uh, who heard about it. And uh, uh, this morning, I just want us to, to zone in on that and see what it has to say to us. And we've already uh, heard it this morning in our singing. And so if you have your Bibles in Mark chapter 7, we'll begin reading in verse 31 together. The scripture says, Again, departing from the coasts of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the coasts of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseeched him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his finger into his ears. And he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and saith unto him, Ephatha, which is, uh, that is, be opened. And straightway the ear, his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man, but the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you, and Lord, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who has done all things well concerning us. Lord, we pray that you would help us to understand uh, what he's done in our lives this morning. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would help us to uh, go out speaking, just as this uh, deaf and dumb man went out speaking. Uh, Lord, that you would put the word of the gospel on our lips, uh, Lord, so that all those around us would hear it, and we pray that we would see some saved. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would be with all of us this morning uh, according to our needs, according to uh, how you have chosen to deal well with us. Uh, Lord, we pray for the sickness in this household. And uh, Lord, we thank you for uh, those that have come and, and joined with us this morning to, to worship again, Lord. Uh, we just praise your holy name for it. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'd be with our missionaries where they're at. Give them the words that they should speak and the way that they should live in their time and their place. Lord, we ask that you'd be with our leaders to help them to uh, abolish the injustice that's done against people. Uh, Lord, the, especially the, the murder of children, we pray that you'd help them to stand against it. And Lord, we pray that you would send Christ quickly to uh, bring a perfect order into the world. Lord, we ask that you would be with us and that you'd forgive us of our sins and you'd keep us until that day. And it's in his holy name we pray it all. Amen. passage we read this morning is about a man who was born deaf and who had an impediment of his speech because of his deafness. He, he couldn't speak plainly. He may as well have been dumb. Uh, but what I want us to look at primarily here is in verse 37 where the scripture says that they were beyond measure astonished, saying he hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. He hath done all things well, the scripture says. We know that this, of course, being Jesus, is uh, even itself an understatement that he has done all things well that he's done. In Christ's ministry, he did everything well. That is, he did everything good and proper and according to the will of God. In his healing, we see here, he had done well. He had brought perfect health to this man where he had uh, before been in illness. Uh, in, in our passage, of course, it, this is a profound miracle that Jesus did. To, to Simply by touching the man, simply by commanding him to be well, he was made well. And not only that, he was able to speak properly. Uh, just think about all that had to go into that, all, all the nerve endings and, and, and all of the, the, the uh, neuronal pathways in the brain and all of the, uh, the things that had to be set right 
and properly functioning in order for that man to be able to speak. All of his life, he had learned to speak as a deaf man. He had learned to speak with an impediment. And yet Christ, when he came, in an instant, taught his body how it ought to speak. And so he had done well. He had done a good job in healing this man above even what our doctors today can do under the same circumstances. Our doctors today can't simply say, be open to the man's mouth and his mouth be open and he can speak. Jesus came and brought perfect healing to him. Uh, no other person had this manner of power to heal in his day nor in our day. In Luke 7, 12, we read that all of this came also out of his good intentions, his good nature, uh, and his compassion towards the people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the, son, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the buyer, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Even the death was not outside of the range of Christ's healing. And he did this healing out of compassion, as with all of his healings. He felt for the people. Likewise, also in his teaching, he did all things well, all things good out of his good compassions. In Mark 6, 34, we read, Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. So great was his compassion as a teacher that when he saw the, the multitude, when he saw his people that were given to him by the Father spread abroad and, and, and running to and fro as people having no shepherd, he took it on himself to become their shepherd and teach them the right way of God. He did all things well concerning his ministry. And also in redemption, he did all things well towards his people. In Hebrews 2 verse 17, Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the people. Uh, he was made like unto his brethren, like to you and me, so that he could have compassion, so he could have mercies stored up for us, to make reconciliation between us and and the father in hebrews 10 verse 5 wherefore when he cometh into the world he saith sacrifices and offering thou wouldest not but a body hast thou prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O god his his compassion so surpassed all compassions, that he came from glory, from a state higher than us, and a state not needing us in any way, and not even needing to redeem his people. And he came down to be made like to us for the suffering of death, to die on the cross for us. He has done well towards us in redemption. In all of his ministry, Christ did well. And not only in his ministry on the earth, but in all things, Christ has done well towards us. In that it says, he hath done all things well. Whether they be in heaven or on the earth or under the earth, he has done all things well. In creation, he made all things good. In Genesis 1.31, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. In two ways, this was very good. He made all of this. He made it good because he made it properly functioning. He made it to work well for us. 
in Psalm 136 and verse 5, and I would encourage all of you at some time to go and read Psalm 136 in its totality. But it says, To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. And uh, all that he did to, to make the sun function as it does, to shine for the day, and the moon and stars to shine for the night, he did it because of his mercy. He has done all things well, all things good towards us. Out of his, again, about, out of his compassion, his love towards us, he has done these things. And also, in setting apart the world as holy, not only in making it function right, but also in making it holy for himself. Isaiah 40, verse 21, Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the grasshoppers that stretcheth out, uh, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. It says that from the beginning, from the creation of the world, what did God do? He made the world. He stretched out the heavens. He 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 made everything in the world as a tent to dwell in, for himself to come and dwell with us. In Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. When it says that God made everything very good, when it says that Christ hath done everything well, it means that he has made the world for himself set apart as his sanctuary to dwell and meet with his people in. Christ's desire for creation has not changed from all of this. Also, in that he has made all of these things, he's created them, he governs them, they belong to him. Also, he has done well by each one of us in giving us provisions in giving us all that we have. In Job 1.21, we read that the Lord gave, and blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord has given us all that we have. In James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. If we have anything good, it comes from the Lord. If we have provisions, if we have shelter, if we have clothing, if we have fellowship, it comes from the Lord. And it's a good gift from him. In 1 Corinthians 4, 7, For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou hast not received? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? It. He has given us all of these things. Every provision, every good gift that we have is from him, including that he has given us a calling. And all of this we, we see is wrapped up in the, in the statement uh, that we read uh, at, at the end of uh, chapter 7 uh, again. That they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He hath he maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. So Christ gave this gift of being able to heal to this man, or of being able to hear. He gave him his hearing back, but he also made him able to speak. He gave him a calling. He, he gave him a, 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 the ability to do good. Uh, and though he, he had said that at that time he shouldn't make Christ known, uh, the, and the man went and disobeyed this, nonetheless, he gave him the ability to speak. He gave him the ability to preach Christ and, and the goodness that he had done toward him. 
This ought to have been saved, of course, until after the resurrection of Christ. But nonetheless, he gave him this ability and this calling in the end that he would go and preach all the, the good things that Christ had done to him after his, uh, Christ's passion. Ephesians 4.15, grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. In Christ, he has given us all a part to play, just as, as each part of our body has a function, has a calling on it, so Christ has given each one of us a calling in his church to, so that we can do his will to the edifying of Christ through his body. In 1 Corinthians twelve eighteen, But now hath God set every member, one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. In the body he has done everything well, everything good. And so what we see in our passage in this short statement is he hath done all things well. Whatsoever he's done in heaven, on earth, under the earth, he has done all things well. And he's done it towards us out of his love and compassion to us. And so it's, it, it's fitting that they recognize this. Uh, in the scripture, just out of this one healing that Christ had done, they recognized everything that he has done is good, is proper and holy according to his love towards us. And so this morning, what I want us to see is what should our response be toward this? When we hear that Christ hath done all things well, Christ has done well by you today. Christ has done well by each one of us in here. There's not one good thing that we've received that did not come from him. God gave us all of these things. He made all of these things that he's given to us. He has done well by us. And what should our response be? That he has done all things well. When as we sang earlier this morning, we count our blessings, we see what God has done for us, what should we do when we receive that knowledge? And it comes into our mind that God has done all things well by us. First, of course, is that we should be thankful toward him. Colossians 1.11 says that, that uh, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, give thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Uh, when we are strengthened, when we know that he has made us to be partakers, it says that we should, with all joyfulness, give thanks to God. Now, when we, when we receive something good from our fellow man. When someone has done well by us, when they've helped us out with difficulties that we've had, when they've given us over and above what we need, we're thankful to them. We at least have the courtesy to, we'll say, thank you. Uh, and to, to, in return, usually, uh, we say, if there's anything that you need, then I will do it for you. How much more then, if we do that to man, which does not do this out of divine love, which does not do this in the same measure that Christ has done it for us, who has only done some well by us, how much more should we give thanks to God, who has done all things well concerning us? He, he's given us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Every good gift and perfect gift comes from him. We ought to give thankfulness to him constantly, especially in the church. Coming in to the time that we set apart to worship him should not thanksgiving be found on all of our lips. And of course, every day when we, when we have something good come across our way, that we should immediately give thanks to our God. 
Also, when we hear of this, we should faithfully serve Christ. In Hebrews 12, verse 28, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Seeing that we receive this kingdom, that Christ has made it for us, let us serve God acceptably in all things. Let us do as he's called us to do, not grudgingly, not sluggishly, but do it according as he has called us to do it. In Romans 14, 18, for he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Uh, in these things, if we serve Christ, we are acceptable to God. Uh, he has done well by us and let us do well by him. It is our reasonable service, as uh, Romans 12 says to us. And finally, and this is what really drew me to this passage this morning is if we have done, been done well by uh, Christ in all things, then we ought to live holy lives. We ought to give ourselves to Christ in everything and put away the things that are detestable to him. If Christ has done well to us, let us not live in the filthiness that sent him to the cross. Genesis 28, 16 says, Jacob waked out of his sleep and he said, surely God is in this place and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stones that he had put for his pillows and set it up, up, up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. Uh, when uh, Jacob knew that God was in that place, that, that God was there and had given him the provisions that he had, the, the, the stone of the angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. What did he do? Immediately he took that good thing that God had given to him even the stones that he used for his pillow. And he set it up as an altar to the Lord. Uh, how perverse would it have been if when he saw the vision, when he knew that God had been good to him and had protected him all these years, if he had immediately turned from that place and spat on the ground and went off to go into his wickedness and sin. It is every bit as perverse as when we take the good gifts that God has given us and we sin against Christ. We know that he has done well by us in all things. He has given us even the tools that we use to sin against him. And then we turn away and we go into sin. As Jacob said, how dreadful is this place? How dreadful it is to use God's mercies as an occasion to sin. Uh, another passage I would encourage you all to go and read this week is Ezekiel 16 in, in the entirety of that chapter. And that tells us about how Israel had used the good gifts of God that he had given to them to sin against him. I'll just read a few verses in verse 10 of Ezekiel 16. The Lord said, I clothed thee, clothed thee also with broidered work and shod thee with badger's skin. And I gird thee about with the fine linen and I covered thee with silks. I decked thee also with ornament, ornaments and I put bra uh, bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thy ears and I beautiful crown upon thine head. Thus wast thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou wast exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness." 
which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. In all that he had caused his people to prosper, giving them uh, food and drink and giving them uh, money and giving them comeliness and, and desirability among all the nations. But it says, thou didst trust in thine own beauty and playest the harlot because of thy renown and pourest out thy fornication on every one that passed by. His it was. And of thy garments thou didst take and decked thy high places with diverse colors and playest the harlot upon them. The like things shall not come, neither shall it be so. It says that even the gifts he'd given them, uh, the, the, the beauty that he'd given to them, the garments that he had given to them, uh, all of the prosperity, it says that they took it and they went and they played the harlot. They sinned against him with the very blessings that he had given to them. When we read that Christ hath done all things well, and we know that he's done them well by us, we shouldn't take them and grievously sin against him. Uh, if we just, again, if you would read Ezekiel 16, you'll see what horrible things they did. Uh, how they sinned against him and how disgusting and perverse it was before God. I pray that we would not be found in this sin ourselves. Therefore, believers, it is written in 1 Corinthians 6.17, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. When we read, he hath done all things well, we ought to read and, and, and hear and have brought to our minds to come out from among the filthiness, to, to do well by Christ because he's done well by us. We should be induced to love him and to abstain from the sins that he hates. In John 15, 24, if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. When the people heard and understood that he hath done all things well, the nation of Israel sinned in just the way that we've read about. They took Christ who had done all things well the greatest gift from the Father that was ever given to the world, and they took him and hung him on a cruel cross. Uh, if we are his people, we should not do so. We should turn to him in faith and love and turn away from our sins and strive to use the blessings he's given us for his glory. And so, believers, I pray that we would turn from those sins that beset us this week uh, because Christ has done well by us. And now if there's an unbeliever here this morning, as I've alluded to already, Christ has also done well towards you. Christ has given you every good gift that you have, including this call from the scripture that goes out to you today. Look unto me, says the Lord, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. Psalm 65, verse 5 says, O God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of them that are afar off upon the sea. If you are here this morning, and you hear the call of Christ to come and look on him and be saved, let him be your confidence. Let him be your salvation. Don't sin against the call of the gospel toward you. Trust in him and he will forgive you of your sins. Do not sin further against him, against his love toward you. Because 2 Peter 2.21 says, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, 
The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Don't turn away from this gospel call. Don't turn away from the call to trust in Christ and be saved from your sin, to go and turn back into your sin. But instead, trust in Christ. Believe that his death is sufficient for your salvation and entrust yourself to him. And so I pray that if there are any that are lost, that you would trust in Christ before the day of his judgment comes. And again, believers, he's done all things well by us. And so let us be thankful to him this morning. Let us go out and serve him in holiness, in a way that is acceptable before the Lord. Not going back into the sin that he's delivered us from, but going forward into a way that's acceptable before God. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you, and Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for Christ, who gave his life for us. And Lord, we pray that you'd help us to go out with thankfulness this morning, and that you'd help us to serve him better and turn from sins. Lord, we ask that you'd be with any in this place that don't know Christ, that you would draw them to salvation. Lord, that today, before the day closes, before we step out of this house, Lord, that they would entrust their lives you would save them. We ask that you'd be with our missionaries where they are. Help them to uh, minister the gospel in their context. Uh, Lord, be with our leaders. Help them to uh, administer the justice that you've given to us in your word. And Lord, we pray that you would be with each one of us to forgive us where we fail you and to keep us until the coming of Christ. And it's in his holy name we pray at all. Amen.